Welcome everybody to this week's community meeting, CubeVert community meeting, I should clarify. It is the 22nd of May. Hopefully you can hear me and hopefully you can see my screen. Um, I can hear someone, uh, which tells me that my audio is working. Um, I can hear you. Perfect, thank you. Um, for those that arrived late, if you could please put your name in the attendees uh, up here. Be very helpful. Um, for anyone who is new um, and you'd like to, I guess, aside from the S390X uh, group, who are going to have their own kind of like introduction thing. Um, we do like to welcome our new people. If you want to pop something into chat, we'll go through our schedule. We'll go through our upcoming CFPs. And then uh, if anyone's kind of put their hand up and say, yes, I would like to introduce myself, we will um, we'll give you some time then. Uh, in the meantime, I will move on to, uh, I can see someone's got the thing on. I'm just going to mute you. There we go. Um, what was I doing? The release schedule. The 1.3 release schedule. Um, what are we up to? What did I say that was? 22nd. Oh, I've got something here. So hopefully, uh, if we've been doing our job, we should have the 1.3 beta tag done. Um, all right. And we must be, what, like three weeks minus one day from our feature freeze. Is that, is that how time works? One, two, yeah. Three weeks to the day. That's correct. June 12th is the right date. Thank you. I was more just like, it's the 22nd today, the 12th, uh, quick counting of days, 21 days. Um, and we've got the 3rd of July is our GA. Uh, so two dates that's always good to keep in mind. Let's have a quick look at what of the CFPs are open. I didn't update this this week. Uh, Qvet Summit, CFP has closed. Um, and we're hoping to get that schedule up by the end of May. KubeCon Cloud Native Con North America 2024 CFP is still open. So you have some ideas and you think you'll be uh, able to get there, by all means, please submit. If you have an idea that you're not entirely sure about it, please feel welcome to ping me. Um, I can, we can talk about it. We can have a look at something. I can review it um, or I can just soundboard if you want. Um, oh. Uh, We've also got these two links here, the list of open KCDs and the DevOps days. Oh, these are both, let's have a quick look. Um, these are both regional events and they keep this updated. So I don't have to. Um, so if you're ever interested, please go there, check it out. Um, and if something interests you, please let me know. So I can add it to this, I can promote it and we can put it here if you get something accepted. Speaking of getting things accepted, um, I'm guessing Daniel must be in Lithuania at DevOps Pro right now, um, giving his um, giving his talk. <laughs> That's what we call it. And in about a month's time, three weeks' time, um, a bunch of people will be representing Qubit at DevConf Czechia in Brno. All right, enough from me. Hopefully, someone else can talk soon. No one's put their hand up to, for an introduction. So let me try and find how I get back to here. All right. Oh, one last thing. Um, I did want to thank everyone who submitted to Qubit Summer this year. It was, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the highest number of submissions that we've had, um, which is a, a, a positive mark. Um, and as I said, we are working on presentation selections, and we aim to notify folks soon and have a schedule by the end of May. Ed, I think you've got the next mark. Not so fast. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, notify that I also sent an email earlier today that uh, make a bit of core binding if anyone you was using it to be gone in v1.3, they will not be able to start new VMs with it. And the alternative can be found in the 
in the PR there and in the, I think also the documentation. And that's it. And uh, in I hopefully in a week or so, we will also send a PR to remove past uh, core binding. For both of them, the alternative is to use the the plugins, which are also documented, so we should be fine. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things, Ed, um, before you un before you mute. Uh, so I'm sure this is documented in the PR or in the docs. Um, so at the moment. Uh, am I correct in thinking that there is a like a phase out period of time where people can continue to use it before it stops being supported in the product? It was it was uh, what did you say in the in this email? I think Alona's email before there was a two phase stage one in V one point two. Uh, it was marked with a warning that it is going to be deprecated. And be aware that it will not work from the next version. And we are in the next version now. So in V13, you will not be able to start new VMs with it. But existing virtual machines that are still working, they will continue working. But if you try to stop or start them, they will stop working. And if you try to migrate them, it will not succeed probably. So try to, to migrate before if you didn't do it already right on thank you and hopefully the uh, sig network team is pouring one out for the homies of mac vtap and soon for past uh it's an end of an era maybe i'm just sentimental yeah we have ah i think this was me um we have a new design proposal speaking of network stuff um, a new network binding plugin for the vhost user interfaces. So this has been um, talked about in this meeting before, a couple of folks from Orange, I think, if I remember correctly, Benoit, and on the mailing list. And this came out, yeah, an hour ago. This is hot off the press. Um, and yeah, if this affects you, please have a look and give it a review. Ooh. Very fancy. All righty. Jan, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, let me turn on my video so people actually see me. Uh, yeah, so I just asked for the spot to introduce the people working on S390X since it's more than C3 you might have already heard about. Um, it's just so in case you see one of the names, you at least know why they are talking to you, or at least know that they belong to us and aren't just some random person approaching you. Um, so I guess we can just start off the top of the list I wrote down. Cheryl, if that's okay for you. Um, Cheryl, you're muted. Okay, then um, I guess uh, Justin. Hi, I will give it a try. Uh, I hope everyone hears me. I oh, can hear great. you. That's great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so um, I'm Jiaxing, and um, so I'm also uh, based um, in Germany. Uh, basically, share the same office floor, right, Jan? Kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, <laughs> um, so right now, I'm uh, assisting with the uh, S390 uh, infrastructure. So uh, I think it's mostly internal work, and uh, I guess you are not going to see my my pull requests. Um, but um, would be glad if you could uh, offer your assistance. Um, if, if well, um, I have questions or anything. But um, very glad to join this wonderful community, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, Cheryl, have you got it working? I don't see her anymore in the list. So, uh, Vamsi, do you want to continue? Yeah, yeah. So, am I audible, everyone? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I am Vamsi Krishna Siddhu. You can call me Siddhu. So, I have been uh, 
actually working on enabling the Qbert CI for S3 and NTX uh, so that uh, the the S3 index and will enablement on Qbert can be on S3 uh, can be go easier. So I interacted with uh, Brian and uh, Daniel and uh, actually raised some PRs for enabling the Qbert builder on S3 and NTX and uh, I. I'm also raised the PRs for the special interest group. And so I was already a QBot member uh, recently I become. And uh, I am actually also working on enabling the KHS provider on s So you might see that PR as well from my side. And I also added external cluster to the QBot coming, uh, QBot. So Brian helped with me, helping me with that. So yeah you might uh, see me see my PRs soon and uh, yeah it's nice uh, working with the community thank you everyone yeah thank you Vamsi Chandra yeah hi everyone uh, I am Chandra uh, I uh, share same office as uh, uh, Vamsi Siddhu um, yeah so I'm uh, mainly uh, right now looking into the Qbert CI part um, along with Vamshi. And yeah, hope uh, we'll get some PRs uh, raised uh, to support S390X uh, mainly. I mean, yeah, that's our focus. Yeah, uh, it's really glad uh, to join this community. Um, and um, this is my open source uh, uh, first uh, community. Um, I'm joining, so yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, really uh, looking forward uh, working with all of you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Ivan's unfortunately couldn't make it today, but I see Cheryl, you say it's working now. I, I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. There we go. And then you might even be able to see my, is my, no, well, maybe not. Okay. So yeah, my name is Cheryl and um, I'm working on the containerized data importer, um, just porting it to S390X. And you've probably seen a couple of PRs and you'll probably see about half a dozen more from me and um, some from David, who is on vacation right now, Thomas David Greedel, who's next on the list, just next to me there, um, who's working on the uh, CICD and testing and making sure all the uh, everything works together. So that's that's what we're doing. Thank you. Hopefully, everyone. I've been I've been helpful to you so far. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the um, help that uh, David Hiller and um, Alexander Wells and a few other people who I um, interact with a little bit less, but everybody's been really helpful and um, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Excellent. Hi, yeah. Alex. <laughs> Then I guess I can go next. So uh, my name is Jan Schintag. I've introduced myself in the past, I guess, and been here a bit more often, but I am currently mostly working on enabling KubeWord on S390X. So I've already merged a few PRs there that fix either problems I found or enable things that I need for S390X later. Um, and I guess that's everything about my side, I can also briefly introduce Ayman and Konstantin since they're both not here. So Ayman is mostly working on end-to-end -end tests right now for KubeWord and also on the infrastructure side together with Justin for setting up the final cluster where we hope to have bare metal. It's uh, a very bureaucracy. So uh, you can guess that it's not going fast. Um, and Konstantin is working on also testing it, but uh, rather from an S390X perspective. So seeing what we can do that is specific to S390X, seeing um, 
what we might want to support in the future, what's already working. Um, so you probably won't see much from him on the upstream side. And with that, I think the last person, Rohan, are you here as well? Yep, I'm here. I hope you can hear me and also see me. So I'm Nurhan. Um, I'm currently the product owner for OCP Vert on Z. So basically, I'm working with Jan and the team to lead this team to the enablement of CubeVert upstream for the Z architecture and uh, also uh, preparing all of that uh, in the goal of having OCP Vert itself work for uh, IBM Z architecture on the midterm, long term. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, that's already everyone. So I'm through with my topic as if there aren't any questions. Doesn't sound like we have too many questions, but uh, we might get some in the chat. Um, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to all come here and introduce yourselves. That's uh, really awesome. And of course, uh, welcome. And hopefully you've all become accommodated with um, our Qbert dev mailing list and our two Slack channels. Um, probably more likely to find Qbert dev the more useful one. But we also have another one called virtualization. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think we're, as Alexandra's already uh, shown and some of you might have already found, uh, it's a very helpful community. So if you've got any questions, anything like that, please feel more than welcome to throw something on the mailing list or in the Slack channel and I have uh, utmost confidence that someone will um, respond in not too long a time. Thank you. So uh, if anyone has any questions, throw them into chat. I will eventually see them, uh, but we will move along. Uh, we have a couple of PRs to look at. So this is one I added from the list. I'm looking at the wrong tab. Just have a look to see if anyone said anything, and they have not. So this looked like a bump of CNI from 112 to 1 1.2. Um, yeah, it's relatively small. And it is from a couple of days ago. Now, I'm pretty sure Lubo is on PTO. Uh, Ed, you're still here, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Uh, I see you're assigned to this, so I might just leave this in your capable hands. Yeah, you could, you could just, I mean, one of the open questions here that I have is why? <laughs> That's it. No, but just, just uh, like, why? Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm fine. I don't have a problem with it, but I would like to understand the reason. Okay. Uh, I will uh, add, I will ask it. Uh, it's okay. Perfect. Thanks, Ed. And Aurel, I see you've got a couple of things here. Yes, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. So this PR is talking about uh, reducing the redundant file system reads. In every pod, there is a file that says on which namespace this pod is deployed to. And this uh, PR is talking about the change in VIRT API. We have three webhooks, one mutating, two validating, that are constantly checking this file and are reading it from the file system 
every time a VMI is mutated, created, or updated, which is a lot, and it is very inefficient. So this PR is trying to reduce this number to one, at least for one of the webhooks. And further uh, work will be done in the future in order to apply this to the other two webhooks. And I would appreciate your review on it. So this is the first one. Before you move on, um, yeah, who can, uh, who's interested in having a look at this one for a while? Uh, you can send this to me, Hendricks. Awesome, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, I had a quick question here. Um, <clears throat> as part of this um, PR, is there any kind of improvement in um, memory or CPU usage expected? If so, um, is there a way for us to measure it? I think there will be much less access to the file system, at least uh, for this webhook. And I guess there is some way to measure it, but I haven't uh, thought on how to measure it, maybe using the profiler, maybe using some other tool. I will be happy to hear suggestions on which tool can I use in order to measure it. But an improvement should be visible. In the yeah. end, it will be even significant. Yeah, um, well, I would recommend um... Let's bring this PR up for discussion in six scale. Um, if if such things can be recognized over time and put into um, CI, then it'll be amazing. Um, let's discuss how to measure these things in six scale call. Okay, I'll join six yeah, scale it, call to Yeah, I, um, I think that, uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see uh, Hear how this because I, I don't think these aren't real file systems that, that, that this uh, information is on. Like it's probably you know in memory. So yeah, um, I'm probably on the more skeptical side of huge gains with this, but uh, would be interested to measure. Yeah, I was talking more uh, like. Uh, efficiency wise of not uh, reading files over and over again doesn't matter where they sit just caches them once and forget about them yeah the os caches these things too um so it's not it, anyway yeah we can get more into it later just one question uh, there could be some problem doing uh, upgrade uh, with this uh, kind of cache well, presumably no. it doesn't move namespaces. So I don't think that you have to worry about that. But um, yeah, I think it'll be um, interesting to measure any differences. By the way, even if it will uh, change namespaces, uh, the cache gets filled every time Virt API starts. So it should work fine in the new namespace. Yeah, right. Uh, it, it was just a question that comes in my mind right now. And for the second PR, it's a little documentation PR. In one of my previous PRs, I've changed the behavior of the pod eviction webhook, and this PR uh, aligns the documentation to match. You can assign it to, to me, Andy. Uh, I. Uh, regular to the, the PR, so I know 
what's the top here? Thank you, Federico. Yeah. Thank you both. All righty, not a lot on the mailing list that a lot of people haven't already seen and commented on. There was just one. It's a bit of an FYI from um, just from what Brian said yesterday about the fossil lands. They're stuffed. Um, oh, yeah, and just, I'm going to actually reply on that and just say that they're back again. They're fixed again, so it's okay. Ah, oh, great timing. Yeah. <laughs> so ignore that. Oh, everything's fine. Nothing to see here. And now just a couple of bugs. Let's have to see if anyone's commented. They have not. All right. So. I got in trouble last week for, for bringing in a bug that was pretty fresh. So I can kick this on to next week since it was raised less than 24 hours ago. Um, but it's here and we're looking at it now. So there you go. Uh, VMI with a disk configured over NFS PVC volume fails to start. Seems problematic. There, it's on a con cluster. Should be fine. Still on Kubert. Test. Let's see. Start VM. Got a great log. Launcher doesn't like it. Mission denied. Where are we at? 1.29 Kubernetes with 1.2. That should be hunky dory. And it's an Ubuntu image. So I mean, the, well, is there a disk image file on the NFS file system? Let's have a look. Alexander, I don't think it's even coming to the disk. I mean, if you look at the log launch, the launcher log, it's pretty short. I don't know. It's, uh, it fails very early. So I've had two people intrigued by this bug. Who can I um, CC to this to have a look at this at a later date? Yeah, you, you can add me to that. Thank you very much. And our last one. But Kubernetes environment with one node. Yeah, they've done the lab. Second lab, set up the storage class. Installed ranches provisioner. I'm willing to bet it's a wait for first consumer uh, storage problem. Oh, no, they're supported by it. So that, that shouldn't be the problem then. Oh, 
Okay, so an experiment in the killer coder and it works as expected. So presumably it's a problem with their cluster. Yeah, give that one to me as well. You don't need to tell me twice. Thank you, Alexander. And that brings us to the end of our agenda. So I will extend that thank you to everyone here for joining us today. Uh, thank you for everyone who came to introduce themselves from the S390X enablement team and for everyone else here who's, um, yeah, part of the community and participating in all of the wonderful ways that you do. Uh, I'd like to leave uh, a few seconds to answer in case anyone wants to jump in at the end with a question, a query, or a comment. In which case, we will end, uh, end our meeting here. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day, wherever you are, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye.